morning everybody welcome back today we're going to work on some embellishments um, I think it's been a little while since we've done anything embellishment wise and I really thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to play around I wanted to alter some paper clips and that's what I've done here so let me just very quickly show you um, two examples of the ones I'm gonna make today probably be a little bit different but you can see on the back that will slide right over the page and then same with this one I have not glued the back to that one yet so I'll sit that over there to the side and then we can add the um, paper clip to it so let's get started um, the first thing is I've taken <clears throat> my little um, label punch from now this one is retired but if you don't have a label punch you can easily pick up label dies and I've got some of those but obviously punches are always easier uh, if you've got a punch it's so easy just to knock them out and what I like about it excuse me guys I'm getting a throat lozenge <laughs> I have to keep this box of lozenges by <laughs> Every time I get on here to speak to you guys, it's um, my voice just goes. So it's always easier, obviously, with the punch. And what I was going to say is the great thing about this is, again, when we get these off cuts from our digitals, I always just shove these into a drawer, and then you can come back and just cut these out. So um, <clears throat> the other thing I've used are... A couple of the little um, this oh I can't remember what you call this one but it's there's the information on that guys and that one gives you a little button and then the other one I used I know this is retired because it's stamping up the embosslets this was the little butterfly one and that's what I used on this one and what it will do is it cuts and it embosses all in one one step. So <clears throat> I had a couple of these left over. It doesn't show as much on, I've used the um, digital, but if this was on plain, you would see the embossing much more. So that was a couple other things I found. I've had these for years and years, and I just ran across them. I thought, oh, I better play with those a little bit. So the other thing would be embossing folders, because you can see I've done some embossing here, and the same on that one, and that just always adds more, more interest to your, um, your project, if you can get more textures going on. This one, I'm going to add, again, this is using all my little bits and pieces that I've cut out, and I love, love, love these. You know I do. They're just, um, it's a nice neutral base that's easy to, to add. And let me just see what we've got here. That would be a little bit different. That's pretty, but that's pretty, uh, I don't know. That would be pretty, wouldn't it? Okay, and these are super quick guys. Um, the first thing you do is the back, cut two of these and get your little paper clip. I'll have this one that will add to the top of the page. So if you want it to slide onto the page, then place your paper clip over there. So the first thing I do is just get that on there. I always put the short part in the back. Um, 
Actually, no, I won't. I'll, I'll do it in reverse this time. I'll keep the short bit in the... This is the part we're going to add the glue to. So I'll set that to the side while we decorate this, and then we'll just glue it to that. And that's how quick and easy it's going to be. I'm going to put this one on here, and then I think I'm going to take a little bit of lace as well. So I've got this really old lace. I'm just going to take a little piece of that and tuck in behind. So if you guys are interested, um, at the end of the video, stay tuned if you're interested in seeing a combined um, little snippet of what I've purchased the last couple of weeks at the um, car boot and the flea market. Because I didn't have enough from the flea market, I mean, sorry, the car boot, to show you. I just thought I'd wait and see how I did at the um, market. And I, I did get a few things at the market, so I can share with you that now. For those of you who are interested, I know not everybody wants to see it, so that's why I thought just stay at the end. And what I'll do is... Um, is just do a quick run through because I'll have to gather everything up. I've got it scattered everywhere. But I did have a good, uh, a really good time. Even though I didn't buy, I got a few things, but I didn't, um, I didn't get as much as what I actually thought I would. But it was just nice to be out around people. Everybody was just enjoying being out. It really was a nice atmosphere. And we took a picnic lunch and uh, went back to the car and had our sandwiches. And then we went back in and browsed again. And like I said, we didn't pick up much. I'm going to take a little bit of that. That just hangs over a little bit too much. But um, that's okay. I, I just enjoy going and seeing such interesting things from the past. I'm going to let that dry, so let's see how that one's looking here. Let's go ahead and make this one another one that we can add to the top of the page. And I'll just get that glued and then we'll work on another one. So I want to thank everybody who's contacted me in response to, you know, getting some feedback on how you're enjoying the channel, what you'd like to see. Um, so that was very, very helpful. I will be addressing each of those um, suggestions, you know, in the upcoming videos. Because I had a few people wanting me to <clears throat> explain a little bit more on different things. So I will be addressing those. So thank you guys who did... Um, Take the time to let me know. I appreciate it so much. Okay. And I could add a little button to that. Let me see if I've got anything. It might be kind of pretty just to add something. I'm not going to on that, but I will add something. I feel like this just needs some kind of little sparkle, so hang on. It 
it's just a little bit plain, I think, that one. So I'm going to add just a tiny rhinestone. I probably put, should have put a bit of glue on there, but I didn't. Debating if I should put something on that, but I'm, I'm actually happy with that. But that one, I just felt like it needed something, a little bit of something there, and I'm fine with that one. So, <clears throat> okay, so we've got this one. I don't know. I've got all of these flowers from my porch print, and I do love them, but I'm inclined to go back now, I think, and I think I'm going to shrink these down because these would actually be beautiful against that, but they're too large of an image, so that is definitely something I must get around to doing. smaller I don't know if I'm gonna like that or not I kind of like that if I can get some lace in behind that I think that's pretty I think I prefer that one because it's a little bit darker. Okay, yep, I'm going to go with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of um, thread through that. I'm just changing the button, guys, just because um, and this I've threaded this needle, and it's it was too big to go through that one. So I've just got a little bit of cheesecloth. I'm going to try to just, I just don't like to really see um, buttons. 
plain. <laughs> I like to see the thread. And um, and I'm not going to stitch it through that because it's um, so small. I will glue this one. I I would normally sew my buttons to things. Before I go any further, let me ink this a bit. Okay, just getting a little bit of lace here, and maybe even, let me see if I can put <clears throat> a tiny bit of fabric behind it as well. I don't know if I'm going to lighten it or not, but sometimes I just pull on these laces if it's if it's too clean of a cut just to try to make it look a little bit tattier now this one's very difficult to do most of them will just kind of pull very easily but this one because it's a newer one it's harder to do but sometimes you can just snip it up if you want to make it look So you don't get that straight line. Okay, now let me try this before I commit to it. Yeah, I'm actually happy with that. And then I'm going to add that down in the corner just to break that, break it up a little bit. Now you could run that through the machine if you want to. I'm not going to today just because I'm being kind of lazy. <laughs> it's one of those lazy days. It's rainy here. I just can't be bothered. <laughs> See how that looks now. Let me get. So that will we'll leave that to glue, out to glue to dry, and I'll have this one going in from the side. And again, just. Uh, just cover that really good with, with whatever glue you use, and that will hold that in place. And you'll get some bulk, but when you've added all these other layers, it's, it's really not noticeable. And the other thing you can do, and I'll show you because I've got one more I can share. Assuming I can find it. So see how that's wanting to come apart. I'm just going to put that clip on there. Just clip that together for a little bit. Alright, let me see if I've got it here, guys. <clears throat> okay, I did 
don't, I think I must have packed them, but you can also use hairpins. Um, and you'll get a really nice long clip. So bear that in mind. A hair clamp will work ju just exactly the same way. Just glue the flat piece because you know you one will have um, uh, your hairpin will have kind of like that little notch up and then down. This straight part, glue that inside and then that will clip over your page and you can make really big um, altered clips then. Because um, these are quite small, you know, you're, you're only talking about what, about two inches. Where if you use those hairpins, you can make some really, really nice big ones. So keep that in mind. Unfortunately, I think I... I must have thought I wasn't going to need them here, so I've um, I packed them. All right, so let me see how this one is now. It's looking good. And let me get you a little so you can see a bit better when it's. So there, there's four, and you know, in my mind, although this has got um, antique papery behind their paper, which is a shabby chic, in my mind, the difference between these two and this, I would consider this shabby chic, and these I would consider nature, even though... Um, you're using shabby chic colors and it's nothing to do with the butterflies because you can make a butterfly very much shabby chic. Let me show you what I'm talking about because this is one of the questions um, is <clears throat> what would I distinguish between shabby chic and nature? Those I would say are nature. They just to me they just look like they're going to go in a nature journal versus this I would tend to go in a shabby chic or vintage, um, and between shabby chic and vintage, I guess how I would distinguish between those two is if I'm using vintage children images or ladies or Tim Holtz people, <clears throat> that I would say I would classify that as vintage versus um, just florals. And shabby chic patterns, then I would I would tend to say that. But like this, I mean, you could. It's nothing to do with the butterfly because that if that was on something, I would say that's a shabby chic, even though the butterfly is part of nature. Um, that's how I would classify the difference. I hope that that's helped. Um, does, and and I think to me these are softer. And these have got a more rustic, which I I tend to lean towards this over shabby chic because it's a I you know I've taught I've said it many times. I think my style is rustic chic because I like the burlaps and the leather look and things that I would associate with being out in the woods and things. <laughs> so I do hope that that's clarified some of of how I classify things um, and other people might look at that and say they're all shabby chic but it's just that's how I would distinguish between them um, and particularly in the shades of pinks and things of which this has got pinks and blues back there but I think because that brown stands out on that and I wanted that I think I like the way it con contrasted with that soft I would put that in a nature journal so Okay, guys, I hope you've enjoyed those. Now I've got some little paper clips ready. Um, so those will be going into some journals coming up. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to gather up what I found at the car boot and the flea market. Not a lot, but I think you will be interested. So I will be right back. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll share with you what I picked up. Um, like I said, not a lot this time. Um, it's just, I really just enjoyed being out, so that was great. 
Okay, so you are going to see, um, I'm going to do a little insider's uh, look at where I'm working now, temporarily. It's it's nothing exciting, but I, because I've redone my studio, I was on the lookout for some little jars. And I found a lady that had these. These are not vintage, so, you know, but I did get a really good deal. I got three of them for a pound, so... I couldn't pass that up, and I like the colors, so I thought, well, I have to have those, because those are going to be great little storage. So I picked those up. I found another lady that has these little trims. I don't have any little blue flowers. And then I found these just different. I don't know. I've never seen any like that. It feels... Let me open it up. It, it, feels like it's um, resin, but it looks like fabric, so I can get into it here. Yeah, it's fabric, but I just thought those were just something different I hadn't run across before. So I picked those up, and I needed some more yellow. I found these peach, and that's like a really really pale blue and white and then I found the red ones I don't have anything like that so I snapped those up and then I found these kind of a peach colored button and they they look pretty old to me so I grabbed those and those were a pound for that bag but I don't know they look pretty old to me so I didn't mind paying that um, I got this trim. I love that. There's probably a good three yards of that, and I got that for three pounds, which I didn't think was too bad. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And this is a lady I've been buying off of for years and years, and she does have fabulous vintage uh, lace, but she is it's expensive. Some of her stuff is so old. And I don't know enough about it to know if it's worth it. Okay, so at the car boot, I did manage to get this whole bag of scrap material for a pound. And that equates to about $1.25 if you were to convert it. And there were some beautiful, I mean, that's really pretty. And the reason I buy these like this, guys, is for my snippet and... Now that I'm getting into the, isn't, aren't those pretty for purple? The slow stitching, you just use such small amounts that I love it when I find ladies like this that have got these. Now this one, it's a large design, I don't know. I can probably back a snippet roll with that. That's probably how I will use that, guys, is make that as my bat, base. And then I could also back the snippet roll because it already, you already are starting out with color. And look, I couldn't believe that was in there. It's like ooh, because I couldn't see it at the time um, when I bought it. It was it was, and so when I opened up, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a bee in there. <laughs> Quite a bit of the little purple, which is great because even though it's plain. I can definitely use that, and look at that. Isn't that pretty with the yellow, green, and, and purple? I'm going to have to do something special for my own journal with that. You know, my own journal that's that's never going to get made. <laughs> but I live in hope. <laughs> yeah, I keep, I keep hoping. Although I would say, I have started tucking a few things back, guys, so... Um, some of the things that we've recently made, like the um, ephemera, ephemera folio, I did keep one of those for myself. as Because, I, you know, it's not the same to look on, on my channel and see it as having it, you know, in my hand. So I thought I must start keeping myself something. Okay. Mr. Paul purchased this for me because we'd split up at one point. And, um... Mm, don't know. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but it's a whole roll of this. So I actually 
I may end up putting this up for sale because it is um, it's from a wool <clears throat> I believe it was a wool company and, and they're no longer so the woman had a lot of stuff from them so I think I'm actually going to put that up for sale okay I ran across <clears throat> Let me sit this all to the side, guys. So I lucked out. One of the other ladies I've bought from in the past, um, had some of the Liberty of London packs, and I got everything that she had. And art is just gorgeous. <clears throat> Perfect size for me because I don't, I do not need large pieces, but if you guys have never worked with their material, I've never felt anything so nice as their fabrics. Aren't these fabulous? Look at that. So I couldn't believe I got each pack for a pound 50. And I know that for, for this on eBay, because I've bought from eBay before, this would cost you about 15 pounds and possibly even 20 for this amount. So I snapped those up. Look at those. Oh, that was gorgeous. I can totally see that in a bee journal. Look at how many I got. Oh, that one's beautiful. And I love that. Look at that. Oh, isn't that so whimsical? Oh, I love it, love it, love it. So, yeah, I was so happy when I, because I got there early. you got to get this place early. And we just, as soon as they opened the gate, man, we were charging that gate. <laughs> but luckily, I got to her before anybody had snapped these up. So, yeah, I've got plenty of uh, fabric now to work on some um, you know the ones that maybe I'm not crazy about I'll set those into a, another stack that I can use up in snippet rolls because I must get back and try to make some more snippet rolls very soon um, look at that isn't that beautiful now see that's my colors palette right there that is so beautiful. I love that. And look at, I've spotted this one back here. And look at this. Fran Francesca, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, look at this one. This one's kind of funky. It's like a hippie, a hippie pattern. That's cool. Oh, these are gorgeous. You know what? Hmm. I've just had an idea. I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna keep it to myself, but I think it's gonna be something you guys are gonna be happy about. Okay, so that was another little find from the flea market. If you guys are interested, I didn't want to post it on here because I thought, mm, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm pushing my other channel. But if you're interested, I have posted a short video from the flea market. The channel is called Wise Old Homestead. And it's our sister channel that we're, we're just now starting to add content to. So if you want to see what that flea market is like, um, it'll give you a really good idea. It's not very long. It's a very short one, but I think, you know, if you're interested, do check that out, guys. Okay, so I ran across, they have tables of people who show up. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. And they take buckets of jewelry and just dump it. And you would got to sort through, and can you imagine necklace chains that have all been tangled up? And you'll see five, six ladies over there. They're going nuts trying to get to something. 
but I don't get into that part of it. But it's just so funny to watch because I'm not kidding. It's heaped up. Some of the piles are like a good 14 inches deep. I don't know how you'd find anything. I don't even know how the sellers even know what's in there. I mean, there could be something completely priceless in there. They, I don't, I don't know if they've went through it. It's just funny to me. But anyways, another lady there um, had these brooches, and so I, d I just couldn't resist. Look at that. I mean, you know these are old, even though that is plastic. But I can tell by the closure and stuff that that's an old one. Look at them dried. So, you know, this going out of Nature Journal, that one I thought was so pretty. I might keep this one for myself. And then I couldn't resist this one. I don't really know. Maybe these were for scarves. You guys, if you know, let me know. But I suspect maybe a scarf went through that. But look, it's got a little bit of a, like a glitter it's just beautiful. And the same with that one. I love that. And then I couldn't resist that one because I thought, oh, on a journal cover, that's going to be beautiful for a nature journal. Actually, it goes that way. So I managed to get those. <laughs> and this is not vintage, guys, but I couldn't resist it for my um, studio. Look at this. It's enameled metal, and it is so heavy. But I had to have that when I saw it. The guy had it, and I was like, oh. So I picked it up and looked at it, and I was like, yeah, I think it's a, a replica. But I'm actually fine with it because of the quality. It's not just a thin, you know, like some of the signs from Hobby Lobby. They can be really flimsy. This is not like that. And so I had to have that. So I picked that up. Okay, this one I'm super excited about now. Bearing in mind, it looks a little bit rough, guys. It's a little bit rough. But I have been wanting one of these old sewing boxes. And that one lifts up, so look at it. Now, I've never seen one like this that's that ornate. So my thinking is, while I've got a little bit of time, I think... I'm going to attempt to take each of these, I'll just do it like one at a time, take it off, and I'm going to try to do this in a um, chalk white, and then come back with my um, wax within all of this design, and that will pull that out, so that that'll be a nice shabby white, is what I'm my thinking, and I don't know, but I suspect this is split. So what I thought I might do is from here all the way over, I'm going to get a really nice, um, in fact, I might even use my twine, um, you know, my linen thread, and I think I'll do that on the whole thing. Won't that be pretty? But I couldn't resist that. I just fell in love. I went back to her twice, and she said, you know, you're destined to have this. You've been back here. And so I did. I went ahead and caved and bought that. And last but not least, guys, this is probably the gem. Look at this. It's an old Essex. Um, it's, a, it's a mini sewing machine. And these were made here in England. And what I've learned about them, it's supposed to have been you know, just after World War II. It all works. So I thought, isn't this going to be perfect for, um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to give it a little bit of cleaning up. But look at that. It just needs a good old clean down in there, I can see. And I'll get that oiled and everything. But I, when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. But look at the condition of that. Uh, there's no rust on it. I mean, the bolt a little bit, but I couldn't resist. I had to have it because this is going to be my little companion for um, travel, travel sewing. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. 
But yeah, when I saw it, I was just drawn to it. I went over and, I, of course, I had to dicker with the guys. I was like, well, will you take less? And um, so, yeah, that's my pride and joy from the flea market. So, guys, that's it. That's, that's everything from two weeks. Now, um, I won't be able to go this week because um, we've got something else going on. So um, it'll be a couple weeks before I get to go back, but hopefully I'll find some more goodies. I don't know. I shouldn't be buying anything. I'm trying to downsize, but but anyways, I will show you guys my studio very soon. Like I said, it's not decorate. It's not very. It's just to give you some ideas on um, the storage. Is I'm hoping it'll help some of you. So I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, video. I hope you've enjoyed this little haul. You guys take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.